If you're moving to or living in New Zealand, at some point in your life, you will probably buy a house. And what you need to know is in New Zealand, a lot of houses are sold through auction. In this week's show, we're going to revisit Ryan, who has just, literally just sold his house via auction. And today, he's going to join me and tell me all about that process, what it was like from a buyer's point of view and a seller's point of view. So let's jump on in, go back to Ryan and find out what happened when he went to sell his house in New Zealand at auction. Got it, got it, got it. the NZ Ahead podcast. Everything you need to know about moving to and living in New Zealand. There's a whole world here. So nice to be with you again. We call Aotearoa around here, bro. Uh-huh. You'll be right. We are your hosts, Liz and Brian. Amazing New Zealand in the southern seas. See, that's where I belong. That's home. Welcome back to the show. It feels as if I only just spoke to you. <laughs> yes, it wasn't too long ago. <laughs> it wasn't. You were on the show last week where you talked about buying and selling properties because you are an expert at that because you've done it twice in the last five years. Yeah, expert. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, let's I, go with I'm learning. <laughs> I'm definitely learning. Um. And just to fill people in, on that show, we talked about you selling your house um, in Whangaparaua, which is just outside yes. Auckland, and you were selling it at auction. Yes. And that was the first time you'd been through the auction process. Actually, can I just say, because you haven't actually congratulated me in public, did I or did not I not say to you, oh, you're going to sell that house on Thursday, Ryan? <laughs> did I? <laughs> yes, I know. Lots of people said it, but it's hard to it's hard to believe it, especially because we only had one bidder. So yeah. you just, yeah. Yeah, oh, so that process okay. is, yeah, that process is interesting. But yeah. So just to fill people in, you were selling your house um, and you were doing it through auction, which you'd never done before. And then you came on the chat on Friday, I think it was, you came on, the, you're, you're part of our, our, our private New Zealand group and you came on and you went, yay, I've sold my house. And then we said, wouldn't it be great to talk about the auction process? So you very, very kindly, even though you are very busy at the moment with a new job and a new house and kids and life, you very kindly agreed to come back onto the podcast and discuss what it was like in that auction process. So I just yes. want to say thank you. Oh, no worries. So go on. What was it like auctioning your house in New Zealand? So um, it, it was it was funny. Um, I, I figured out some some key things that are good to know going forward. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll talk about that. But first and foremost, they just kind of when you when you put your house on the market, you have a discussion as to how you're going to market it, right? So we decided to go the um, auction route because we were looking for what they call cash buyers, right? Mm -hmm. To get an unconditional um, offer. So basically they had to do all of their due diligence before the auction. So they sent, um, or, or I should say that if you are going to buy something at auction, you would have to go and do a property inspection before the auction. You have to get all of your um, mortgage stuff out ahead of time and those kind of things. So, those are those are kind of important so you know moments and then the day before the auction i actually sat down with my real estate agent and the auctioneer um to kind of work through what's the strategy for selling this house at auction um so that was one thing i found particularly interesting basically that the auctioneer works for the vendor for the seller of the right. house yep Right. So that is their motivation um, is to get the house sold for whatever price the vendors are looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. Do they get a percentage of the sale? Is that why they're there? I, I don't think so. I think for them, it's mostly um, I think they just get paid by the um, 
um, by your agent. Right. Because, I, I mean, I didn't pay that guy, right? I think my agent did. And so big picture, I'm sure that if they want to continue working for those agents, yeah, you're still looking for a good price and you want people to be happy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's it, it's thinking from that perspective. But it's important if you're buying at auction to know that when you're talking with um, that auctioneer, in a process I'll, I'll get into in a minute um, that they essentially they're there for the buyer. Right. That's a good right. Point. So that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, because what, what happened, so we sat through one other auction ahead before ours, cause they just clumped them, you know, in, in small groups. So you're on zoom, were you? Yes. So right, we did okay. this via zoom. Um, just with everything going on. And plus, I think they're starting to prefer it that way Hmm. um, because it's easier to have little side conversations on the telephone while you're on a Zoom call instead Hmm. of trying to whisper to each other. Um, So the first house, you get up there and there were a couple of bidders. And so they go, the agent represents them Hmm. because when we come on, the buyers and sellers have to keep their cameras off and they're, muted because they're not allowed to say anything at the auction. Everything's done via the agents. And so, you know, they kind of bid uh, the agents are bidding on behalf of the, of the buyers. And sometimes you'll see them on their little, on the cell phones, kind of having a quick conversation. Oh, and then really? yes, they're, they're willing to go up another 25,000 or whatever, another 10,000 <gasps> or whatever. Right. And then they'll mute themselves and you see them like, yeah whispering into the hand so there. you can't see um, the buyers then is that is that right you can't see the buyers correct. and you can't you hear can't... the buyers correct so how do you know or how many sellers. buyers there are there how do you know does it how do you know how many people are there they you that's a good point they register ahead of time right you, okay. you have to be registered for the auction because basically you have to sign paperwork that says yes we have done all those conditions ahead of time. This will be unconditional. We are cash buyers, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, So they register. So you know exactly how many people are going. Um, So that happens. If it doesn't hit what is called the reserve price, which is what the seller, um, they basically put a, I don't want to sell my house for less than this price. Right. Right. Does everyone know that price? No. Oh, how frustrating. Yes. Um, So the only person that really knows that is the seller, the auctioneer, and the agent. Right. Okay. So for us, like I said, we only had one registered person that was coming in. Okay. Now they still go through all the auction process, which, you know, I find interesting because they have to do everything with you know, whatever legalities and paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Right. So for us, the, the people bidding at auction put out a price. Okay. And they go, well, is there anybody, you know, (laughs) any, any other bids? We know that there's no other bids. Right. Um, But then it's funny because if it doesn't meet the reserve price, which of course happens usually in a one person, you know, scenario, the, Basically, the auctioneer goes away from his video. He gets on the phone with the with the buyers. With the buyers, yeah. Right, and he starts through whatever alchemy um, they do. uh, They basically have conversations around. If you dream of moving to New Zealand, then you are going to love what I'm about to share with you. 12 years ago, when me and Bri emigrated to New Zealand, we were scouring the internet, trying to find any information that we could about what our life would be like when we got here. And basically all we had was YouTube. So we made this vow. We said, when we get to New Zealand, we're going to create something that we can share with others that answers those questions that you're so desperate to know about. Like, what is your life going to be like when you get here? And that's what I'm here to offer you today. We have created a five-day free, absolutely free video guide that shows you what it's really like to live in New Zealand. This stuff is unique and it is 
fabulous. You are not going to find it anywhere else on the internet. And like I say, it's absolutely free. You'll be sent a video every day for five days and you will know what it's like in New Zealand. So head over to the website. It's www.nzahead slash free. One more time, that's www.nzahead slash free. You are going to love it. Uh, they basically have conversations around that it doesn't meet the reserve. Let's talk about what's how you know valuable it is to you and blah 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 blah. Right. So you, you, you they talk through there, and then once he figures out, uh, you know, once they figure out what the price is, then they will call the sellers. And the seller's agents, right? Because the agents are always on the calls. Mm -hmm. Um, So the three, the three of us get on a phone call and they say, okay, here's where they, here they, here's where they've come down to, or, you know, here's, it might not reach the reserve. It might be over the reserve, but you have a conversation of, are you willing to lower your reserve to where they're, to their bid? Mm -hmm. Because you can, the sellers can lower their reserve, but they can't just arbitrarily raise it, right? That's the important, you know, fact. So, yeah, so we had a reserve price. Now, because we only had one buyer, our reserve price was really high because we knew we were going to come down. Right. Because you can go down, but you can't go up. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, uh, the auctioneer, they get on the phone with you and say, here's where I, th- here's where they've come to. Is this an acceptable price to you? Um, sometimes they'll say, Hey, there's a, there's a little more or less going on. Um, I might be able to squeak a little more out of them. Mm. You know, do you want me to try those kind of conversations? Right. Uh, so oh, it's, it's, I bet that was it's, tense. It's it's interesting. It wasn't as bad for me as I thought it was going to be because the auctioneer managed to to get what we wanted out of them. Right. Um, it wasn't as high. I mean, it's, is it ever as high as you'd like it to be? Um, but the market being where it is right now, we were perfectly happy with what the offer was. Um, you have to be realistic about the market. Um so that was fine for us. It was very much like, yeah, that that's fine. That's good. Go ahead and tell them we're okay. And then they, you know, sometimes it'll be, be a couple of back and forths because it might be, no, I, we're not going to take that price. And then uh, they'd go back to the buyer and go, well, they're not going to take that. Is there any more room? You know? And so there's still a little bit of a negotiation um, and essentially the auctioneer becomes the intermediary between the two groups. Mm. Um, and, and so, yeah, you just kind of go back and forth until you agree on a price right? and, or, so, or the deal falls through and it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. I've got some questions for you. So first of all, congratulations on selling your house and, and, <laughs> Thank and you. congratulations on surviving your first auction. I bet that was just so tense. I just can't imagine. It, <laughs> it is, especially when you're not first, right? Because yeah. you're sitting there going, I have to wait through other auctions oh. and now I have to go, okay, all right, this is how this works. And yeah, yeah. Right. So, Okay, so let's just pretend that I'm coming to buy a house at auction, and that house is up for five hundred thousand. And my, I have n- so. Is it right that I have no idea what your house is going for? Well, not your house. Let's use a hypothetical house. Is it right that I've got no idea whether, I, say, I've got three hundred thousand? Am I? Is it even worth me coming to the auction? Have I got any idea whatsoever what this price is? Would they give I, me an I, indication? Yes. I don't think you have no idea. Um, I think when you go through the rest of the process, you end up having a conversation with the, the vendor or the seller. Um, Those words are kind of used interchangeably here. Um, You have conversations with the vendor's agent. Right. Right. Um, Because you have to organize things through that agent. Mm -hmm. Right. So So they become kind of an intermediary. You always have to remember that agent is on the side of the seller. 
That's that's an important thing to note. Um, but they'll usually give you a rough idea mm-hmm. of what the what the price is going to be, or, or they'll ask questions around, well, "What do you think it's worth?" And oh, yeah, that's pretty close to what the sellers are thinking, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you 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 do have to tease it out a little bit and have those conversations of here's my budget, you know, it's, and of course you always want to say a little lower than your actual budget, right? Cause yeah, of you're, course. you're still negotiating, right? Yeah. So it, you kind of, well, here's roughly our budget. Oh, well, here's roughly what they want to sell it for. And you kind of get a, an idea, right? Mm. So you're not usually going to be $200,000 off, right? right? Okay. Yeah, so you so, might go, well, my budget's around 450 and the people are like, well, they really want closer to 5, mm-hmm. you know, so you so you'd have an idea as to what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. Right. Is there anyone helping the buyer? I mean, you keep talking about oh, they're working for the seller, they're working for the seller, the agent. Who's helping the buyer? Is there anyone helping the buyer? Um at the auction, not really. Right. Um. Yeah, you just kind of get get a little steely um, when you're when you're buying, and you have to. Really, the best attitude is being able to walk away. I mean, is is knowing that if it goes above where you want it to be, you you, you can walk away at any time, and you mm-hmm. don't. There's no obligation. Um, they really do kind of. Um. They, they like to use the sunken cost fallacy against you. What's that um, mean? Be, okay, so sunken cost fallacy is the idea that you've put so much time, energy, whatever into something that even though you know it's going to fail, you continue to pour money, time, and resources mm-hmm. into it because you've got so much invested. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you'll see this a lot in businesses where they will push a project and they know it's going to be terrible. They know it, but they don't want to just stop it because they're like, oh, we've already spent millions of dollars on this. Yeah. So we're just going to keep going through, even though it's going to be miserable. Um, so what happens is as a, as a buyer, you've already spent money on a property inspection. You've probably already spent money on your limb, Right there's already some costs that you've put out. So in a sense, you're invested already. Mm -hmm. And if you really like a house, you're emotionally invested as well as financially invested. Right. And so they are going to use that. Who is the agent? The the, the bidder. Yeah. The the auctioneer, the 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 agents. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody that's working for the seller Mm -hmm. is going to use that. Um, We, we, we did our best to temper that a little bit. Um, but there is still just that point that, that that is a reality that you need to understand yeah, as a buyer. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. They're going to turn so. around and say, you know, oh, are you sure that you want to pull out now for the sake of $5,000 when you've invested all this time and effort? Are you sure? Is it yes. worth it? And you're like, oh, yes. and you're sitting on the end of a call. You're like, oh, go on then. Go on then at my price for 5000 <laughs> <laughs> right. And you know? that's what they do. They just, they nudge you and it's like, oh, look at this opportunity. It's like, oh, maybe it's the only house in this price range on the market. Oh, look what you get oh, for this house. Great schools. It's, <laughs> right. It's worth, it's worth what you're going to, you know, put right into next it. To so, that ferry. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's, that's what they do. They just, they, they kind of have to, you know, entice you in those ways and kind yeah. of get you to, to, you know, when you're emotionally and financially invested already, that you just, they're just pushing you to, to your limit, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should I have yeah. just mentioned as well, and I will do in the intro, but if you haven't listened to Ryan's previous podcast, when we talk about limb reports and um, or, or, yeah. you know, the buying of the house, go back and listen to the previous episode because he tells you about that in depth. It was a wonderful <laughs> episode. Right. So just to be clear, because I'm nosy, how long did the, <laughs> Buying the backwards and forwards, the, you know, the pulling on the old heartstrings and, oh, go on, give us another five grand. How long did that take from start to finish for you to sell your house over auction? 
From the beginning of our auction, I'll mm-hmm. say that just because there were other auctions ahead of time. From mm-hmm. the beginning of our auction to the time we agreed on a price, about 10, 15 minutes. <gasps> oh, 10, that's quick, isn't it? It's fast. Hey, that's it's good. It's fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh. it's nice from one perspective. But again, that speed is also technically working against the buyers. So that's yeah. a that's a thing you need to recognize. You know, it's it's always recognizing that if you're buying at an auction, you can get a really good price on things, but you have to be willing to negotiate in a real way and you have to be able to to say, no, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm walking away from this deal. Mm-hmm. See, I don't think Which I'd be any good hard. at that. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you at any point feel sorry for them? Did you ever think, oh, poor them? You know, um, you, well, yes, cause you're, cause you, yeah, because you're a really nice guy, and I know Joe. And I'm not saying people who sell at auction aren't nice, but no, like you say, it there is a sort of, I don't know, it, it's it's not well, it, like, yeah, it's 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 in some sense it's stacked against the buyers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're working on getting the best deal you can, so sometimes an auction is a better option. Right. Especially if you're a cash buyer, you can often buy stuff at a slightly lower price because looking at it from the seller's perspective as well, if I can sell at auction, I'm selling to a cash buyer who's who can settle within weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. Because between the the end of our auction and um, our settlement date is going to be like three weeks, two, three weeks. right? Right. So it's a very small time frame. And we have to think to ourselves, well, we might get a little bit more money, but we're talking another month on the market. We might lose out on the house we want. We have all this money that we're going to have to pay into, um, you know, the current mortgage and we're going to have to sit through more open houses. Right. So, so that's the kind of attitude that sometimes you have to have as the buyer Mm -hmm. at an auction to Mm -hmm. just kind of go. No, these people don't want to sit through this headache anymore, right? Yeah. That's, you know, just try to try to use that in your own mind. But after, after they made you the offer and they said, yeah, okay, we'll give you the money. Did you get to see them? No. Oh, I'd want to see them. I'd be like, right, put, turn the camera on. It's like that program, isn't it? Like now we're going to reveal your buyer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? you just I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I had that moment after you came back with the first, like, here's the offer. It's like, okay. And I was like, that that offer's fine with me. And then it very quickly was like, well, we think we can get a little more money. And so the auctioneer gets off the phone and I'm like, we don't, we don't, we don't need that much more money. Don't, don't alienate uh, the, the, the Yeah, the seller, you're worried. Right? Yeah, because you're scared of losing the them, aren't you? Yeah. Right. I'm like, yeah. no, we're, we're happy with that price. Just, <laughs> and then he came back and it was like an extra couple of thousand. And I'm like, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, well, just stop. Well, you know, at the end of the day, an extra couple of thousand is an extra couple of thousand, isn't it, Ryan? You it know? is. It is. And all it the is. work and effort and time you've put into your house. I know you've done it up and you've added extra yeah. things and everything like that. So I'm just so happy that you sold it. And it's a really good yeah. point that you make about you have to have, you have to be a certain sort of person to enter into an auction because it's not for the um you know for the weak hearted is the faint hearted no you know i was just thinking then i'm making up this little thing in my mind imagine if they just said okay now we're going to reveal your buyer <clears throat> and they pulled the curtain across <laughs> and it was like a little child star or something you know like a 10 year yeah. old kid <laughs> you know like oh, i've made all my money on youtube and i'm gonna buy your house <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think that's why it's like we don't want the emotional side of things we no. don't even you no. know it, you, you best you not wanna, know yeah, yeah yeah it's it's really funny i think we, we were very much like oh man if we ever tried to buy at auction we you just have to have a price in your mind that yes. you're not going past yeah. and no matter what they do you have to say no i mean that's mm. that's just yeah it gets it gets weird um joe and i are very good about walking away and i think that's something that a lot of kiwis aren't used to Mm -hmm. heck a lot of americans aren't used to either um where we will invest some some time into something and if somebody says no we want something outlandish we'll go yeah thanks but have a good day um yeah yeah i mean before we settled on the house we're getting we put in two other offers on houses um and they would come back with uh, counter offers that were just not where the market was at this mm. point and we just mm. said nah, it's 
it's not even worth trying to negotiate, <laughs> you know, because yeah. we're not going to come anywhere near each other. So, um, yeah, so it's it's pretty interesting. But yeah, so if you before, get your heart set on something, it's it hurts. Oh, a hundred percent, doesn't it? It's awful, isn't it? Like you say, it's it. That's when the you, when you'd start listening to your, your you know your emotions rather than your common sense. It's like yeah, yeah. So before I let you go, thank you so much for sharing all this. And what? So just to be clear. When you buy at an auction, you keep saying a cash buyer, a cash buyer. That doesn't necessarily mean that you've got 500000 or a million dollars stuffed in your back pocket, <laughs> right. does it? It just yeah. means that – tell me what it means. Um, yeah, and, and like you said before, we go into it more on the other podcast. Yes, we do, yeah. Um, but this one, to, to kind of do a short thing, it's, it, it basically means you've got no conditions on the loan. Right. Or you've got no conditions on the house yep. where you can say – I've got, I've got all my financing worked out. I've got all of the pro, you know, property stuff yep. worked out. There's, I can't have any conditions. Yep. The only thing that we're going to talk about is price and when you want to settle. Right. Yep. Right. And you have to be able to have your deposit, whatever that deposit is, because you can negotiate that a little bit. But most of the time, the auctioneers, you know, or prior to the auctions, one of the things that they do is when they sign the paperwork and all that stuff that I talked about, it has a, you have X percent as your deposit right then and there. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have that, you cannot do the auction. Right. Got it. it. Um, So from that perspective, it becomes as soon as you sign that paperwork, you're sending us the deposit, right? right? Those kinds of things happen immediately. Um, because if that if the buyer then decides to pull out, that deposit gets lost, right? Mm. Just like just like anything. So it just keeps so if the wheels buy, rolling. So if your buyer pulled out, could your buyer pull out now and then they'd lose their deposit? Is that right? If your yes. buyer pulled out, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's always an and ten percent of a very large amount of money is a very <laughs> large deposit. Yeah, <laughs> right. I remember when we were selling our house in in Bath before we moved to New Zealand, and um, the guy it, we we sold it privately. We didn't go through an auction. We sold it privately. He came around to look, and he said, "No, I want this house." And Brian said, "Okay, well, look, give us a twenty five thousand pound, so fifty thousand dollars. Well, that's how much it was, wasn't it, Brian? Deposit." And he did. And within about three weeks, he said, I'm going to have to pull out. But listen, keep the deposit. It's fine. And we were like, oh, yeah. it's just like yes. I mean, it yeah. was a hassle. And- Don't get me wrong. But 25 grand, it's not that much of a hassle. <laughs> no, no. I mean, legally speaking, I think they have to. But in in this instance, yeah. I mean, when you and when you think about the average house price in Auckland is a million dollars. Yeah. 10% of that is a hundred yes, grand that you're putting course. down, right? Yes. That's a, just ring them up, Ryan, and say, are you sure you don't want to pull out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't mind. Well, the thing is, the important thing to remember is out of that deposit automatically goes you, um, the first chunk of change goes to your agent. They're allowed right, to pull yes. their money out of your deposit. How much, so how much do agents charge to sell a house? Is it 3% or is it more than that? Um. It's it's roughly in line with about three percent. Most 3%, of the time, it'll right. be um, like X percent for the first X number of dollars, and then a lower okay. percentage above a certain amount. That's right. that's what our current one is. So it's usually something of that nature, but it yeah. it usually equals about three percent. Right. Okay. And I've got one more question before you go, and then I promise to let you go because I forgot to ask you this last time. It's a famous yeah, response, yeah. isn't it? I forgot yeah, because I got a this. meeting. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> What's yeah. up? No. Um, do you leave all the curtains and carpets when you sell houses? Yes. You do? Yes. That you leave in is, anything else? Um, you, all right. So in the contract, you work out what are the chattels? Right, yeah. I think it should be called the chattels because um, yeah. it's probably French, chate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so that's where you negotiate those kind of things. Most of the time, carpets, obviously, you just keep them there because that's that's rough. A lot of times here, you just leave curtains. What about um, white goods and things? Yeah, yeah. Just some of that stuff that's basic. Um, Here, I find most of the time you leave all your appliances, except for maybe your refrigerator you take with you. Right. Um, Okay. So there's a couple little things like that that you might 
leave, but um, for the most part, you, you take a lot of it with you. Right. But yeah, curtains and, and any of those, I'm, I'm pointing to my windows. Yeah. Um, any, any sort of, um, what do you call those window things covering you know. sort of thing yeah yeah blinds uh, and, there's yeah 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 there's a word for it and i'm just blanking but yeah, yeah blinds and and those kind of things those all yeah. tend to stay okay yeah right my friend i'm gonna let you go because i promised i'd keep this short i really really appreciate you hopping on and <gasps> letting everyone know what it's like to buy a house at, at auction in new zealand it's such valuable information ryan and yeah. I am waiting for mine and Brian's invite to the party, the housewarming party. <laughs> I expect that in the post in the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> we will. I mean, you'll be in another country for the next month. I so, know. I mean, how are we supposed to? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do it when we come back. I'd love to. I'd love to catch up with you when we come back and come up to your new house. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, if you fly back through Auckland, you should just like yeah. come up and stay a night or two, right? Yeah. And I'm sure this isn't the last time we'll have you on the podcast because you're one of our favourite, favourite guests. <laughs> you're so popular. And, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you and um, good luck in your new home. Oh, thanks, Liz. Have a great day. Okay, see you Bye, Brian. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, Ryan. See you soon. I'll speak to you soon, Ryan. Cheers. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We have loved having you here with us. If you love this week's show, please share this with your friends. Send it to anybody you know that wants to think about moving to New Zealand and get on over here yourself. And tell them how brilliant it is as well. And also, if you haven't signed up for our free five-day video guide showing you what life is like, really like, in New Zealand, then go over to the website and sign up. You are missing out. This is brilliant. Go over to www nz ahead slash free and we will send you five days worth of videos about what life is like in New Zealand. You are going to love it. So one more time, that website that you need to sign up for the free five-day guide is www.nz ahead slash free. So we're going to see you next week. Until then, have a great week and we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Say bye again. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.